Hello and welcome to this video where I would like to demonstrate you what it means when people say good technique. Normally good technique means conversion of an advantage without allowing any counter chances. This has become increasingly problematic in modern times because, well, as one strong grandmaster said it recently to me, there are just way too many random chances that appear and uh, it has required uh, an increased level of calculation, concentration and effort by the player trying to win the game. In the game that I'm going to show you, uh, the critical moment arises a few moves after the position you're looking at and I will explain why this is considered good technique. The game uh, that you see now is the one I have played against uh, Johann Sebastian Christiansen, who now is a very strong grandmaster. But when we played, he was a bit less strong. And, um, uh, well, I managed to win this uh, game in a pretty convincing fashion. So in the position you can see, I played the move g6. And already here, I, already, I saw how I will win the game. Um, Black's position is very passive and eventually he will end up in a Tsuk Tsuang. So he played rook a8, rook h7, attacking the pawn on g7 and tying him to the defense of the pawn, rook g8, now king b5, now the king penetrates, king c7, preventing king b6, bishop h6, tying black down to the defense of the pawn on g7, and the point is that g6 is not possible because the bishop on e7 is hanging. So bishop f8 is the only move. And now you can see black's pieces are completely tied down. And uh, he can only move with the king. So king a6, king c8. And now you see when the king is removed from the 7th rank, the bishop is hanging on h6. And this is the moment, where the, the, the instructive moment, where uh, good technique, you could say, <clears throat> comes to the fore. <clears throat> So already here, what I saw uh, when I played g6 was that the sacrifice, bishop takes g7, bishop takes g7, king b6, is already winning. However, since black is completely tied down, I actually took the time to improve my position even a slightly bit and avoid even the slightest random counter chances that black may have based on the, let's say, move b3. And as you will see later in the Rukan game, after the sacrifice, that pawn can turn out to be a bit uh, more advanced than necessary. So what I did here actually was uh, lose a tempo yeah, to use it to include the move b3 so that black does not have even that slightest counterplay based on the pawn advancing to b3. So I played bishop d2 first, avoiding g takes h6, king c7, bishop e3, again, waiting, bishop e7, black can only wait, now bishop h6 attacking the pawn on g7, bishop f8, and now b3. So what I did was I lured the king back to c7, so gh6 is not a threat, and now I took the time to play the move b3. This is what is meant by good technique. Avoiding all possible counterplay, even if it's the slightest one. However, I must say that this is only possible when the position is the, as the one you can see here, which is where black is completely passive and he has no counterplay at all. So white can take all the time necessary to prevent even the slightest counterplay. Usually, this is, and unfortunately, the situations are not like this in most of the games and in those cases we should be a bit more dynamic and vigilant when uh, dealing with opponents counterplay. So king c8 no other choice and now finally the decisive combination bishop takes g7. Bishop takes g7 because taking with the rook allows rook h8 and the bishop is lost. So bishop g7 bishop g7 and now king b6. So it's it's uh, really uh, very depressing how tied down and passive black is in this position. So he chose to go king d7. Moving with the bishop doesn't help because after bishop f8, king c6, 
Black is again tied down, now if the bishop moves back to g7, then the pawn on d7 is lost. So king d8, and now rook swings to the other side, rook a7. So king e8, check, king e7, and rook b8, b8 and this is a tuxfang. The bishop cannot move because the rook is lost. The king cannot move, no squares. So the only piece that can move is rook, rook h8, and now check on b7, king e8, and g seven winning the bishop and then all the other pawns will be lost in the rook endgame therefore after king b6 black played king d7 king b7 in a way we have a, rook, uh, a pawn endgame where white is winning thanks to the opposition king e8 king c6 going after the pawn bishop f8 and now we already how it goes rook a7 swinging to the other side with the same idea of check and introducing the tsuk tsuan yeah, well uh, if I allow myself to say so, very pretty combination and uh, conversion of an advantage. So black didn't want to, to waste, he went to rook h8 immediately because king d8 is the, the line we already saw, check on a8, king e7 and rook b8 with the same tsuk tuang. So after rook a7 he went to rook h8 and g7 winning the bishop Rook bishop takes on g7, rook takes on g7, and the rook endgame is easily winning for white because of the active king uh, and the pawns dropping. Mating threats will be also an issue, and the passed d pawn will decide the game. So rook h3. And now you see, if for some reason that pawn had been on b3, black maybe could have gone rook h2, taken on b2, and possibly could have created some uh, counterplay with with the b-pawn. Objectively it would not have worked, like I say, like I said earlier, but in a practical game you don't want to take these chances. You want to limit as much as possible the opponent's counterplay. So king takes d3, rook takes, king takes d6, sorry, rook takes d3, king e6, here are the mating threats, there is the threat of mate, king f8, rook b7. The rook goes behind the most advanced passed pawn. The rook b3, and now d6. In fact, black is a, a pawn up, but the, what decides is the superior coordination and harmony of white species. So you see the king is supporting the pawn, the rook is cutting off the black king, and it's also controlling the passed pawns of the opponent. So rook a3, check first, king g7 and d7, and now white wins a full rook for the passed pawn. Rook d3, d8, queen, takes, takes. And the pawns don't really go far because they're easily controlled. c4, rook b8, b3, king d5, and the pawns are lost in this position. Black resigned. So it has to be said that it's rare that you win a, a game like this against a, a strong opponent. Um, but in such situations, uh, it, like, like you saw in this example, it's very important to uh, limit to the maximum uh, the possibility of, an, of counterplay by the defending side. So I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, please subscribe if you like the content and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one pretty soon. Cheers!